guys, what's going on? It is Asher coming at you today in Clash Royale. Today, I'm so happy to be joined back by Nicole again on the channel. Nicole, how you doing? I'm doing good. How about you, Ash? I'm doing fantastic. It's been a while. You're still at it with your graveyard freeze, of course. By the <laughs> way, I saw you, uh, I saw Nick at Night doing some pro tips. Shout out to Nick at Night. I saw <laughs> you were on his channel. How was that experience? Was it fun? Yeah, it was really fun recording with him. That's cool. Uh, so, well, how's things? How's life, by the way? I noticed that you're on YouTube now. A lot has changed in the months since we had you on the channel. So, big shout out to your YouTube channel. I'll have that in the show notes below for you guys. But uh, how, how are you enjoying YouTube? Uh, yeah, it's been quite a change since I switched over to YouTube from Twitch. Mm -hmm. I still stream on Twitch occasionally, but, you know, YouTube is a new environment and it took some adjusting too. Everything's yeah. good now, though. Yeah, you seem to, you definitely have, like, really popular streams and stuff. So, keep up the good work there. Uh, on this deck, I have to ask you, I'm just going to throw it out there, right? Freeze has become the most polarizing card in the game, I feel like, right now. So what is your opinion on Freeze? You were using it way before it became meta. So uh, how do you feel about the new Freeze? Okay, so for last season, Freeze was definitely, like, way overpowered. Mm -hmm. And I feel like this season, I could still use a small nerf. Okay, so maybe to, like, the... Whoa, 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 whoa. Oh, sorry. So maybe it's like the damage. I was opening my iPods like in my hand, guys. I'm not even going to edit that out. And then it came up on my Elgato. Anyway, <laughs> uh, my ear pods rather. So you feel like it could use a nerf maybe to uh, to like the damage? Is that what you think the problem is? Or Yeah, I think it could still use a small damage nerf. Okay. But this is still a four spell deck. I mean, if you include the graveyard, obviously, as a spell. <laughs> so why do you prefer still having the arrows and the freeze and the fireball? Well, I made some adjustments earlier this season when mm -hmm. I was facing a lot of three muskies, and I'm still facing a lot of those three musky decks. Having both fireball and arrows really helped me in those matchups. Yeah, and I think the last time we have you on too, you were running. I don't think that you were running lumberjack. Was he kind of relatively new, like the last couple months, or? Um, the last time I was on the channel, I think I was running a Valkyrie okay. deck as well. I don't think I had Lumberjack in there, no. And why do you like it? How do you use the Lumberjack in this deck? Like, are you trying to take advantage of his rage or is just his sheer power? Like, how does he fit into this? Well, he's a really fast tank killer. And that's kind of what my deck is, really fast paced. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's a better substitute for a mini Pekka as a tank killer. Yeah, that's true. And you get the added benefit of rage. And and then, then you have like two great tank killers in the Inferno Dragon and the Lumberjack. So I like it, man. I like the deck. And I love how you still use Witch. Like nobody uses Witch at High Ladder anymore. So maybe uh, go ahead and search for a match. And while you do, uh, talk a little bit about Witch. Like why do you still love Witch so much? Well, for my deck, I depend a lot on my Witch for, you know, spawn troops and, you know, swarm troops. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so are, are you trying to build... I mean, I've probably forgotten all the tips you gave us from the, from the first video that you were on. You're already in a match, too. But are you trying to generally build pushes starting with your Witch in the back of the King Tower or starting with your Giant in the back of the King Tower? Well, it really depends on my starting hand. If I had Witch, Lumberjack, or, like, Inferno Dragon in my starting hand, I usually prefer to wait for okay. my opponent to make the first move. But if I have, like, Giant and three spells in my hand, um, I would make the first move. Okay. So here we go. Obviously, he makes the first move with a, oh, of course, it's Expo, right? Yeah. At least I have Lumberjack for this. Right? Should be fine. And you freeze it. That was a clutch freeze, too. <laughs> and you're actually going to get Lumberjack to the tower there. Get, no, okay. I stand corrected. <laughs> but now at least you know what he's playing here. That could have been dangerous, but you were able to really <clears throat> avoid a any sort of Expo lock there. Uh, yeah, so this looks like a Expo NATO rocket deck. Mm -hmm. Um, generally, it's an okay matchup for me. It's not the best, but like, it's. I'd say it's pretty even. Okay. If he was running 2.9, for example, then I'd have matchup 100%. Yeah, but this ice bow with the yeah the rocket, so it makes it a little bit more challenging. So here you're just gonna kind of let this push die or finish off, let him use his spells. Oh, I stand corrected. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my hand was really messed up, which means I have to like try and cycle better and get in shape. Mm -hmm. And your witch is still alive, it just finally goes down. So you're able actually to get like over a thousand damage to that tower. So that was mainly, you did that mainly to just get your cycle back and fixed. Now you have Lumberjack and Giant back in hand. Yeah. 
All right, let me just pull that back. All right, so I'm back to my original hand, which is um, giant and three spells, and this, that's kind of a... Okay, he yeah, exploded, which worked nice. out fine for me. So you play a giant right into that expo there. That's going to be great. And he's not even going to be able to... That's all you have to use, too. That's like a perfect scenario for you. So now you're trying to build another push. Yeah. Yeah, I had witch in three spells, which means um, I can't exactly cycle a witch in the back. Yeah. So he, he cycles all the way back to another expo here. So expo's going to lock onto your witch. You opt to freeze. Now you can place... Okay, a lumberjack there. That was nice. You have enough for a graveyard. Yeah, so what I think I'm going to do is just go for the tower right here. Okay. And hopefully be able to cycle back to my Expo Killers. Yeah. So Expo is not even a worry right now. You have Freeze too. Oh, yeah, so man. I think that pretty much wins me the game right there. Right? Man, you make it, you always make it look so easy. Do you, uh... I remember the first time that you, you were on the channel, I believe you said something that, like, you, if you consider yourself a very aggressive player. Do you still feel that way with this deck? Um, with this deck, I feel like I play a lot more defense than okay. the deck I, I showed the first time I was on the channel. Mm -hmm. You definitely have to defend more, pick your fights. Okay. So especially, like, early on with this deck, you're definitely going to be, like, a bit more passive and reactive? Yeah, it really depends on the deck my opponent's running. If okay. he's running Mortar Bait, for example, well, Mortar Bait's a really hard counter, but um, if he was running Mortar Bait, for example, I wouldn't go for the Tower Trade. Versus if he was playing like Hound or Golem or like any other deck, I'd go for the Tower Trade every time. Okay, so last match we saw them start out with an Ice Golem and then you mirrored it with the Giant. Now, are you always kind of waiting for them to make the first move with this deck, ideally? Um, it depends on my hand. Okay. Ooh, a Hut deck. Annoying. So three Musketeers, maybe? We'll see. Yeah, I hope it's two Musky and not like Golem or something. Yeah. Yeah recruits or something weird like that all right <laughs> so here just kind of again slow playing it bandit he's got to be playing oh my god all right so he's begging for the fireball you give it to him <laughs> and now you got a little something going here oh i was actually gonna freeze that on him but he freezed me first wow okay so that's good right i guess <laughs> so now you have i think you have an, uh, an elixir advantage here so you're gonna build like a giant push uh, yeah, that's all I can do with my hand right now. Mm -hmm. so let's see how he responds to this. So you've got like at least three elixir on him here, and it looks like he's gonna go maybe minion hoard or something at you. We'll see. I'm still trying to figure out what spell he has. It's probably poison or something. Yeah, or maybe it's just maybe it's just freeze. Oh we'll wait, see. yeah, never mind. I forgot he had he used freeze. Yeah. It's kind of weird. You don't usually, although it's kind of creeping in, to freeze with everything is kind of like a thing now, I guess. But you're still able to negotiate that just fine. And you have the damage advantage going into double elixir time. So is your strategy going to change a little bit here in double elixir time, like now that you know exactly what he's playing? Yeah, I'm definitely going to go more aggressive, try and build up a giant graveyard push. Okay. Okay, so giant right there at the bridge. And there it is, graveyard. Arrows down. And then I'm probably not going to freeze on this and just go back to defense. Okay. I like the... Uh, I, I really like... You can tell that you played, you know, this deck so much, too, that you always kind of feel like... I've noticed this last time, too, is that you, you always have, like, such a good feel for when you need to kind of put the pedal to the metal and then when to kind of ease up a bit. Yeah, so those two muskies were really easily defended by that fireball. I could just focus on defense. And there it is. <laughs> yep. So I like that. You put a lot of pressure in the right lane, and then you were able to kind of just not, not allow him to support the, the, the two musketeers in the left lane and just fireball him and take take care of the tower there. GG's. And you again, you made it look really easy, Nicole, but I think that the, the key there was, I mean, amongst other things in that match, was that you... You did not freeze on that first graveyard push, you know? Yeah, the thing with freeze is you really gotta pick your moments. Wow, and here we go. You're not you're not messing around right into the next match here. Pope right. Pro. 
Uh, I have giant and two spells for a dragon in my hand, so I'm opting to make the first move. Okay. Hmm. hmm. So this guy's starting out with tombstone. You just want to get rid of that tombstone ASAP. Yeah, pretty much. I'm most likely just going to let this giant go for the most part. Okay. Yeah, support it lightly. Hmm. So it's probably graveyard that you're facing as well. Yeah. And graveyard Favorite freeze things. or balloon freeze. I think it's balloon freeze. What do I know though? <laughs> <laughs> Okay. So it's a bit unfortunate that he has Boulder, uh, obviously, yeah. but I'm sure you're used to it because you must face these kind of decks all the time. Yeah, this is one of my least favorite decks to play against on ladder, but hey, my Inferno Dragon survived, so that yep. Boulder's going to be taken care of. That was absolutely cl clutch, too, and your Inferno Dragon was outside that tower range. He's not happy about it. You are. We are. My viewers are. <laughs> All right, so now I think you have the elixir advantage too. So is it time to build another kind of reset or okay fireball again? Well, I like I can't how, push, yeah, go ahead. I can't push in with a giant push and single elixir just because of all the defenses he has in his deck. Okay, so you're slow playing this and just reacting. There's okay, it is graveyard. Lumberjack at the bridge there. Yes, yeah, so, since he's running uh, freeze, I'm usually gonna just try and take care of his troops at the bridge mm -hmm. and let my tower take care of it. Since if I witch, he can just freeze, and I won't. I don't have anything else. That's a quick graveyard killer. Mm -hmm. So now we're in double elixir time. Now you can potentially break through here. This is going to be a weird kind of battle of the freeze right now. <laughs> battle of the graveyard freeze, I should say. So he bowlers. Getting around that bowler is going to be annoying. So do you freeze the bowler, or I don't know. Uh, no, I'm going to go opposite lane right now. Oh, okay. Whoa! Ooh, and, and you freeze! Uh, not quite the tower. But a lot of damage! Oh, wait, no, that's fireball range. That's fireball range. Wow, okay, so he freezes left, but no way. You have Witch, you have Arrows. So, yeah, I think I'm fine here. Yeah. The match. Wow, that opposite lane decision ends up taking the match for you. Is that something that you do per fairly often, especially against a matchup like this? Uh, yeah, especially against the opponent with like bowler down the lane. Mm -hmm. I can't really push into that. Wow. And would you do the same thing if he, let's say he didn't have bowler, let's say he just had like baby dragon, ice whiz, or something like two splashy type units. Would you have done the same thing there? Uh, most likely, yeah. Cool. All right, well, let's go ahead and keep this win streak alive. <laughs> All right. All right. Here we go against Fubak. All right. Good so you're luck. with you're, you're with a uh, <laughs> fanatic now. Uh, what's it been like in fanatic? And would you? Is there any potential of you considering competing in uh, in CRL or at any point in the future? Um, I can't right now. I can't move down to LA and commit mm. to CRL full time. Yeah, it's tough to it, like it, people don't realize that every like if anybody's good at the game they're like why aren't you in CRL but it's like wait a sec you got to like pick up and move for 5 months of your life you know it's quite a big ask Yeah for sure I feel bad for the current CRL players I know and <laughs> We were I was just talking about this on my last video with uh Tag and Brad but it's just like, dude, Supercell, give people some news. Look at your Lumberjack, man. Now, I'm saying, I think we can see why you uh, like your Lumberjack so much in this deck. Yeah, I got a lot of value right there. All right, so I'm just hoping that he doesn't have Lightning in his deck right now. Lightning or Poison. Mm -hmm. Those are the main Golem yeah. spot counters. So you, is it, do you typically just ignore Pump, or do you, do you ever Graveyard into Pump Lane, or...? Uh, I would, but I didn't have freeze in hand, so... Okay. Nice Inferno Dragon there, plus the... You can see, like, the value out of the Witch. I wonder why more people don't use Witch, because you really make a great case for seeing the value. In it. Yeah, for sure. She's a really good defensive card if you stack her, right? Yeah, the Skeletons give you so much value. Like, even there, just distracting that Mega Minion for a little bit, buying you more time. Oof. 
Probably should have thought about that. <laughs> <laughs> Hindsight's twenty twenty, I guess. I'm just gonna build another golem push down this lane. I might go for that pump. Hmm. Yeah, I'm gonna go for this pump. Okay. Ooh, we need golems, so... Ah, this is tricky. Yeah, that pump will be taken care of. Yeah. For sure, as well as some tower damage. So do you... Yeah, okay, I was gonna say, do you go pretty hard on the right here? And it looks like you do. Of course, you don't I'm have I'm just gonna commit to a full-blown full okay. um, push on the right. Oh, he does have lightning. E well... Rogue Dragon should be take should take care of this as fine though. Yep. Oh, nice freeze. Yeah, it's weird how I didn't kill the bats. I know. They were just like a second behind. Forced to use that lumberjack there. He he's forced to use that lightning on your tower though. So here things could really go either way. He of course has the heavier deck, maybe the advantage, but. Never discount I'm just gonna Nicole. take advantage of my witch right now since he does not have lightning. Lightning, hand. yeah. All right, so I'm probably just gonna drop a giant down here and mm -hmm. try and just brute force my way, okay. get some giant damage in. Good freeze opportunity here, maybe. Yep. Yeah. Giant's gonna. No, Ooh, it's fine. one hit, but if you can kill, you kill the night witch, which is good. You kill the baby dragon. Fireball goes down. I'm just Your witch have to is counter my witch. Oh yeah, that's gonna get a lot of damage if he didn't. Yeah. Okay, that was really good. He pumps. All right, weird choice by him to pump up right now. Yeah, because um, I'm gonna yeah. go with another giant graveyard since he's still down elixir from mm -hmm. his pump. Oh, and he golems. Wow, that's that should be GG. Hopefully. Yeah. Th th this this is this is game 100. Nice. What a comeback there. <laughs> yeah, uh, I don't know why he uh, chose to pump up right there. Yeah, I mean, even with the pump, because the pump let him, allowed you to play that witch where he couldn't lightning because he didn't have enough elixir. Then, you know, he kind of doubled down with the golem, which there's no way he could have possibly defended. So, GG, do you want to do one more, Nicole? Uh, yeah. Oh, you're already it. in. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. I like it. All right, cool. All right, Kamal from Ankara. If you had to choose a second favorite, like, deck or archetype besides this deck, what would it be? Hmm. Probably Golem. Golem, yeah. Like the beat. All right, down. this is a, this is a f unfortunate starting hand for me. Uh, yeah, because you used your lumberjack and the and he freezes, so hog freeze. Yeah, he most likely have princess and all that as well. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Lumberjack can even hold his own against the mini packet though, which is nice. So you don't have to respond to that. All right, well, now at least we know what he's playing. Yeah, I'm going to choose to push same lane as him instead of um, going down the lane that was just going down. Yeah. I've seen versions of this deck with, like, Ram Rider, too, so... Oh, Ooh. okay. All right. Um, so, XC NATO. Uh, all right, so you freeze. I mean, you graveyard right on the Executioner. You have enough for the freeze. You drop it down, which is going to help out here. Man, look at all those skeletons. He zaps. But still, you take that care of that mini P.E.K.K.A. That that he put the game right on top of his Executioner. Allow me to get that freeze in. Mm -hmm. When leveling up this deck for my viewers, Nicole, like, what would you put prioritize as like really important to level up? Well, Giant? Yeah. Mm, I wouldn't put Giant up there. I'd put, like, Witch. Okay. So it doesn't, like, get killed by Fireball or something. Yeah. Um... Witch, and then level up your own fireball. Okay, so for rare fireball for epic witch, obviously. And then can't... I'm gonna worry about the graveyard or the yeah. giant, um, until like everything else has been leveled up. Okay. Always a yeah, <laughs> Force him to reverse freeze there. Yeah. Do you like? Are do you just keep freeze hovered every time that you go in? Basically, just kind of waiting to see. Yeah, when I have freeze in hand, I usually just hover mm -hmm. and see if I can just get it, get one in. Yeah, with, like with the four spell, well, with the freeze, the arrows, and the fireball specifically. Like, I mean, I guess it's pretty obvious when to use arrows versus fireball, but. Okay, that was actually a really bad freeze by me. 
Um, his tower is in fireball range though, yeah, so I'm so not gonna worry about that too much. I'm gonna let him take this tower. Good, yeah, good call, good call. And he freezes, so that's good. Yeah, so overcommit by him yep. on that freeze. And Witch, you're not gonna lose. Mini Pekka will get a couple hits on that tower, but you're able to mitigate damage. Yeah, I'm not well. too worried about my King Tower. Yeah. Right. And I'm just gonna go in with a giant graveyard. He already used his game. Mm -hmm. And execution in the wrong lane, so he bats mini Pekkas. You have arrows and freeze both in hand. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Um gonna get some damage in on the King Tower, but I'm not gonna go for the King Tower as well. Mm -hmm. And he might hog freeze right here. Maybe? Oh, okay. Ooh, just freezes. Lumberjack. Oh, okay, okay. I didn't get okay. a hit. <laughs> <laughs> Could've been worse. I'll take when, it. When you're, uh, when you have one tower down, it seems like you almost always uh, giant in the pocket versus in the lane. Okay. Yeah, I generally Davis. don't just go down the lane. Oh my god. Um, you have freeze this defense? Yeah. Okay, I was like, ah! And we're just gonna take the game right there. Boom! Oh my god, that was so close! <laughs> oh yeah, that my was a gosh. really close match right there. That was insane! That was very, very well played. All right, well, let's end it there. Keep this win streak intact. Very, very well done, Nicole. Always a pleasure to have you on. I'd recommend all of my viewers certainly check out Nicole's YouTube channel. It will be in the show notes below. Any shout outs or anything that you want to uh, share before we let you go, Nicole? Um, Not any that I can think of on the top of my head. <laughs> Sounds good. Well, thank you so much uh, again for uh, for coming back to the channel. Best of luck on YouTube and content creation and everything like that. Always a pleasure to have you on. Thank you so much for having me, Ash. No problem, guys. Make sure you check out Nicole's player stats and info. Thanks to StatsRail.com, of course, her YouTube channel as well, and her social media will all be in the show notes for you guys below. Thank you so much for watching. A huge shout out to Brent Chong, my YouTube partner. Check out his information as well. Thank you, and as always, take care, guys. <laughs>